Hey there, and welcome to Wedding Planning Simplified. I'm Amy, and I'm here in lovely London, Ontario, where I am a wedding planner and educator, and I am here to help you navigate your wedding day with hopefully a minimum of stress and with some grace and calm, and hopefully get you to the end of your wedding plans still happy and hopefully still in love with your partner, because we know that wedding planning can be stressful. The two words we hear most often are stress and overwhelm, and we are here to try and help you alleviate that. So if you're joining me for the first time, welcome. If you are here every week, thank you so much. It makes it so that I'm not talking just into uh, the void. So thank you for that. As always, if you have comments or questions, feel free to plug them into the chat. I'm using a third part third party streaming app. So if I don't respond to your comment, it's because I can't see it. But I certainly will answer any questions after we're done here. If anything comes up, if you're catching us on the replay, don't hesitate to send me a private message or an email. I'm always available, amy at unmistakablyyou.com. So if you've been watching us for a while, you know that throughout January, we have been focused on wedding venues because we recognize that 40% of engagements happen over the holidays. So if one of those is you, congratulations. Um, we know that a lot of people through, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and now coming up to Valentine's Day, a lot of people have said yes, and not to uh, leave out our very own Jacqueline, who is newly engaged as well. So congrats to her and congrats to you. Um, but we know that a lot of newly engaged people are starting the venue search and rightly so, because if you are hoping to get married in the near future, 2022 is is jam-packed. It is set to be a very busy wedding year. Fingers crossed that restrictions allow gathering, but it is set to be quite busy for most venues and vendors. And so getting started on that venue hunt as soon as humanly possible is going to be really, really important for you. And so we are here to help you on that venue hunt. We started out the month talking about different kinds of venues and things to look for when you're touring venues. And today we are talking about a new kind of venue that has just kind of popped up in the last couple of years. And it's not that nobody ever had a micro wedding before. 2020. But because of gathering restrictions and because people have postponed and postponed again and they're sick of waiting and they have life situations that mean that they just want to get married and move on, then we've seen the, the uptake in micro weddings and that means lots of new micro venues. So we're here today to talk you through what a micro wedding can look like and where to find some micro venues if that's something that you're looking into or something that you're interested in uh, investigating with your partner. So as always, let me know your questions, comments in the chats. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out as well. So let's dive right in and talk about micro venues. We're going to tackle basically four kind of topics today. One, what even is a micro wedding? Two, where are you going to find a micro venue to host your micro wedding? Three, the differences between what we would call your traditional venue. So the, the things that we talked about a few weeks ago, your DIY venue, your semi-inclusive or your all-inclusive venue. What are the differences between those and micro venues? And then the beautiful thing about micro weddings is that you are not tied down by tradition. So the choice is kind of yours as to what you do with your micro wedding. So what is a micro wedding? And more importantly, is it for you? Well, first of all, micro is pretty self-explanatory. It just means smaller. And there's no dictionary definition of micro wedding. It doesn't mean that if you're under 75 or 50 or 25 guests, it's a micro wedding. Generally, we just kind of use the term to imply smaller weddings, perhaps at non-traditional venues that have shortened time frames, smaller guest counts, and typically some non-traditional elements. So if you're looking at having a, a very small wedding, perhaps just with immediate family, maybe just immediate family and your closest friends, generally speaking, I like to think of this being 20 to 30 people or fewer. And to me, that kind of constitutes a micro wedding. By the time we get up into 50 people, we're looking probably more at some traditional venues and you may be leaning more towards a traditional time frame. So generally speaking, I would say micro wedding 
for my definition, not that Webster's has called me up and asked me to write the definition on this, but I would say probably 20 to 30 guests or so. And then some, you know, non-traditional elements. And usually that means that you're not having your standard ceremony, cocktails, dinner, dance. There may be some elements of that. Maybe you're having a ceremony and cocktails. Maybe you're going to have a ceremony and a dance. Maybe you're just going to have your ceremony and a champagne toast, and then your guests are going to go home, or maybe afterwards they go to a restaurant and you all enjoy dinner together. So there really are no rules when it comes to what your micro wedding could look like. When we do micro weddings at our studio, we provide the space, the officiant, the photographer, and then you have the ability to add on anything else that you'd like. So florals, um, you could add on hair and makeup if you'd like, you could add on decor, bring in a cake, add a bar. So we as wedding planners in our venue try to make things as flexible as possible for anybody getting married there because we recognize that, again, it's a micro wedding and it's not meant to be the big you know, show that a traditional wedding would be. So we've had everything from ceremony only to ceremony and cocktails to ceremony and cake to just a cocktail party with no ceremony. So it's really totally up to you the way that you structure your day. And I think that a lot of people are becoming a lot more open to those non-traditional structures as things have kind of morphed and changed and bounced back and forth from 2020 to 21 now into 2022 with restrictions. And so a lot of people are scaling back and a lot of guests are expecting that and actually looking forward to something that's a little bit outside of the box. So where are you going to find a place to host your micro venue or your micro wedding? You don't want an enormous ballroom for 20 people. So there are micro wedding venues that are actually popping up everywhere. And I just mentioned, we have a space, uh, unmistakably you, the studio. It's in a funky converted factory in the Old East Village. And so it's got a really kind of out there aesthetic. You can see in this picture that I'm showing exposed beams and pipes in the ceiling. We've got a kind of industrial funky kind of a look and it tends to go really well with a lot of people who are inclined to investigate the option of a micro wedding because it's non-traditional, it's funky, it's flexible. You can do what you want in that space. We can set it up theater style, we can set it up cocktail style, we can set it up dinner style. We have a space where a uh, a couple can either hide out from guests beforehand. If you're doing the traditional not seeing each other until the end of the aisle, we have a space where we can hide away one partner. It's really quite flexible and unique. And a lot of micro venues are that. They're exactly what you wouldn't expect when you think of a traditional hotel or golf course micro uh, wedding venue. Micro venues could be things like restaurants. And it depends, maybe you have a restaurant that has a separate room that could be private. Maybe a restaurant would be willing to close down in entirety and just have your party on site. Wineries and breweries often have event spaces, not always, but often. And with the sort of snowballing craze of microbreweries, there are a lot popping up all over the place. And a lot of them do have event spaces of some kind where you could host a non-traditional micro wedding. Smaller event spaces that you wouldn't necessarily think of if you were looking to host a wedding of 150 people. Meeting spaces, um, you know, smaller little halls that maybe cater to small meetings or workshops that you could make into a micro wedding space. Private property, of course, there's no law that says if you're getting married on private property, you have to have a tent and 300 people. You can host a micro wedding in your backyard, bring in catering from your favorite restaurant, call it quits before dark, and your guests will have a beautiful time. There's even a yoga studio locally that's hosting micro weddings. So think outside of the box. Think about theaters. Think about even spaces in some churches. Some churches have really funky little side rooms that might be a possibility. There are all kinds of little places that 
you know, networking spaces, even some, some towns have um, rentable networking spaces or office spaces, some of which are beautiful. Um, there are photographers even who are using their studios as micro wedding spaces. So thinking outside the box and finding a way to, uh, to find a venue that really matches your vision. If you are not funky, if you are not into that industrial look, obviously a space like ours wouldn't suit you, but there are lots of different aesthetics out there in venues that can hold smaller numbers of guests and not seem cavernous, like there's a ton of empty space that's not being used. So when we're talking about the differences between traditional weddings and micro weddings, um, as I mentioned before, it's really the ball is in your court. You can decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. But because a lot of these micro venues weren't necessarily built to be venues, you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're going to get. So if you're looking into having a micro wedding in a non-traditional space, you'll need to know what your package includes versus what you have to bring in. So I'm always a fan of getting everything in writing, especially if you're at a venue that doesn't host weddings every single weekend, or if it's not a golf course or a hotel or somewhere that has their own insurance up the wazoo, you need to make sure that you have your appropriate licenses and permits. So if you're serving alcohol, you absolutely in Ontario need a special occasion permit. And I would always advise if you are serving alcohol that you have additional insurance as well. And I actually should clarify, if you're serving alcohol on private property, if you were to have a micro wedding in your garage, for instance, or in your backyard, you don't need a liquor license. But I would always advise if you are serving alcohol that you have uh, some kind of liability insurance. You can get that in Ontario through a company called PAL, P-A-L, Party Alcohol Liability, or DUO, D-U-U-O. And you can find both of those online. You can get quotes and you can arrange additional insurance just for the day. It's kind of a CYA policy. Anytime you're serving alcohol, God forbid anything were ever to happen, you don't want any liability coming back on you by any means. So make sure that you've got your, uh, your appropriate licenses and permits because a lot of micro venues probably aren't licensed by the LLBO. And so you're going to need to make sure that you have the licensing in place. If the venue, like I said, wasn't built to be a wedding venue, if it's off the beaten path, you'll need to make sure you communicate with guests in terms of how to access the space. Um, if there are any mobility concerns, that's something that you'll want to make sure that you communicate with the venue owner and that you make a plan with anyone who maybe is in a wheelchair or has a walker or has problems um, locomoting, you'll need to make sure that if it's not the most accessible venue that you have a plan for that. You'll need to consider parking. If it's a non-traditional venue, there might not be a parking lot out front. If you're on private property, is street parking allowed on your street? Thinking about things like that. Is there drinkable water? That word that I never know how to say. Potable? Potable? Is the water drinkable? <laughs> um, do you have to bring in water? Are there bartenders that come with the venue? Do you have to provide bartenders? Some micro venues have specifically built packages to cater to micro weddings as they've become more popular over the last couple of years. But some places are literally just renting you the space. So while in some ways a micro wedding might be easier to coordinate, if it's a space that doesn't come with catering or with bartending or with music or with decor, you still could have a lot of coordinating on your hands. And so I, you know, I have to do it. Little plug for coordinators, whether it's a full service planner or whether it's a day of coordinator, even though it's a micro wedding, there still can be an awful lot of moving pieces. And I would always advocate for you having someone to manage those pieces. That is not you. It's not your family. It's not your maid of honor. So make sure that you have someone plug for the coordinator to help you to organize all of those moving pieces, particularly if it's not a venue that typically does weddings. Now you'll need to communicate really clearly with your guests, like I mentioned, about any 
specific access details that they'll need to know. So use your invitations or use your website to communicate that. Let them know that it's not a traditional wedding. It's not a ceremony, cocktail, dinner, dance. If that's not the, the structure of the wedding, communicate that with guests. I'm always a, a big proponent of letting your guests know, especially if you're not providing a full meal. If you're doing a cocktail reception or a dessert reception, or perhaps you're just doing cake and champagne, make sure you communicate that with your guests so that if they need to eat a meal before they arrive, they've done that. The worst is having guests who show up for a 7 p.m. ceremony anticipating a full meal afterwards. And you thought, oh, it's 7 p.m. That's after dinner. They'll have eaten, but they haven't eaten. So make sure that you're communicating with your guests any non-traditional elements. If it's a cash bar, always let them know that regardless if it's a micro wedding or a traditional wedding. If there's not a meal served, always let them know that as well. And again, because these are not hotels or banquet halls, you may not have many staff or just a skeleton staff on site. So make sure that you know what to do if a breaker blows. Make sure you know what to do if someone breaks a glass, where's the broom? So if you're just renting the space, make sure that you have some contingency plans so that you're not scrambling if something goes wrong and there's no staff there to fix it. Now, one of the things that I love most about micro weddings is that there is so much more flexibility to make it your day because you're not, you're already breaking tradition. So fewer people tend to expect the traditional things from you if you're having a micro wedding. So what that means is that you can bypass some of those constructs that maybe don't mean that much to you, or maybe it's your mom that's pushing for it or your grandma that's pushing for it. You can just say, mom, we've decided to have a micro wedding. It's the best choice for us, particularly with the current COVID situation. And because of that, we're not going to have the opportunity to do all of those traditional things that you want me to do. So what that might mean is that you choose to wear some non-traditional attire. This, I love this bride's bridal gown in this picture. This is actually from a styled shoot that we did a number of years ago, but I love the non-traditional attire here. You might choose, like I said, to shorten the time frame. All of a sudden, it's not an eight to 12 hour affair. Maybe it's a two hour afternoon affair or an evening affair. Maybe it's a Friday night when your guests can come to your wedding, you give them some appetizers afterwards, and then maybe you go out and have an after party at your favorite bar downtown when we can gather at bars again inside. Um, so you can play with the time frame and really make it yours and only incorporate the elements that you choose to incorporate. Now, of course, there is a budget component to this that is not negligible. Um, you know, the smaller the number of guests and the less food you serve, the more affordable it is. So micro weddings are attractive, not only because of guest limitations because of COVID, but also for couples who are on a tight budget and who just want to have a celebration with those who are nearest and dearest. It's a really great way to keep that budget under control. If you only have 20 guests and you're serving hors d'oeuvres and maybe, you know, over the course of the hour, each guest might consume two drinks. It's a lot more affordable than that four course meal and six hour open bar that you might be hosting for 150 guests at the banquet hall down the street. So the budget is certainly not negligible. The differences in, uh, in savings can be really dramatic. And so that's also something that we're finding couples are very attracted to with micro weddings. Now, depending on your venue, you might be able to offer more unique food choices. You might be able to bring in a food truck. You might be able to serve a taco bar if that's what you love. You might be able to bring in just charcuterie if that's what you love. Anybody who knows me knows that I would happily eat charcuterie and drink red wine exclusively for the rest of my life. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to the end of dry January so that I can do just that. <laughs> But um, you can bring in what you really like and you're no longer limited by the banquet hall's standard choices or the golf course's set menus. You're usually, often, able to be a lot more personal and unique with your menu choices. If you love dessert, host an evening ceremony followed by a dessert reception. Serve some champagne, maybe some ice wine, and guests will be completely happy as long as you've let them know that there is no main meal being served. You can also make your bar a little bit more unique, especially if you're getting married at a winery or a brewery that you love. 
you probably love it for a reason. You'll have their beer on tap. You'll have their wine served. Uh, at a lot of micro venues who don't have a bar at all, you can bring in your own choices. So it's not like you have to pay a premium because the house wine isn't something that you like. You'd rather bring in McManus and they're going to charge you an $18 or a 50% cork up charge. Uh, $18 corkage fee or a 50% markup charge. Too many words in the wrong order. Um, so you, in many cases, will have the flexibility to do what you want with your bar as well. And that's also something that's very attractive to a lot of couples is not being tied into the traditional menu or bar packages that the wedding venue has had in place for the last 20 or 30 years. You can be a lot more creative. You can demonstrate your personality. You can be you and make it your day with a lot more ease than you can at a traditional venue where you may be getting pressure to keep it traditional at a micro wedding. Hopefully there's not that pressure. Now, if you're interested in hosting a micro wedding, I have good news for you. We have some micro weddings coming up on March the 26th and 27th. It's the last weekend of March. And if you are interested in that, please drop me a line, amy at unmistakablyyou.com. It's a really incredible three hour package that includes exactly what you want it to include. We have a wonderful officiant on board. We have awesome photography. We're going to provide stellar decor and draw jaw dropping flowers and then anything else you want is up to you we can bring in hair and makeup for you we can bring in videography if you choose you're going to get to do a cocktail hour with your guests with your choice of beverages we can keep it non-alcoholic we can serve beer wine sparkling um, you can bring in food if you'd like it's really really flexible and it's a great opportunity for you to celebrate and really be present on your wedding day with up to 20 of your friends so if you're interested in that option at all keep an eye out we're going to have lots of stuff coming out about that in the near future and if you know you're interested and you want to snag one of the spots now hit me amy at unmistakable you.com. We'd love to help you have a wedding that is big on love and small on stress. So as always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'm so happy that you either joined me here today or caught me on the replay. If there's anything that you're wondering, if you'd like to do, if you'd like us to do a live about something that's tripping you up in your wedding plans, don't hesitate to reach out. We are here to make your job easier and keep you as stress-free as possible. So happy planning. I look forward to connecting with you soon. Take care.